Today is April 1st, 2023. This is the Blockchain Journal Podcast. I'm David Berlin. I'm coming to you from Cambridge, Massachusetts, where the Harvard Blockchain Conference is currently taking place. And sitting with me is Jessica Van Meer. She is the COO and co-founder of a company called uh, Mint Stars. And so we were talking, sitting and eating lunch, and you were telling me a little bit about your journey and your story. And I thought, hey, this is pretty interesting. Let's have a little interview. And here we are. So why don't you tell me first what Mint Stars is? Sure. Um, Mint Stars is a inclusive, sex positive content subscription platform with a resale marketplace that helps creators earn more from their content and particularly protects sex workers from financial discrimination and censorship. Well, when I hear that and you say sex, uh, discriminate, financial discrimination and hardship, it sounds to me like you're addressing a problem that exists somewhere else. Is, is, is this uh, a place where sex workers, entertainers can go because they can't ply their trade somewhere else? Yeah, so I'm a PhD student as well at the Harvard Kennedy School, and my research is on sex workers' rights. And unfortunately, sex workers face immense amounts of discrimination from payment apps and banks who often shut down their accounts, even though what they're doing is completely legal. And as a result, they are entirely reliant on websites like OnlyFans and other sites which take 20 to sometimes even up to 70% of their earnings and really don't do a lot to advocate for them um, or protect them from things like chargebacks, piracy, um, getting their accounts shut down, and censorship from credit card companies. All right, so OnlyFans is a pretty popular site out there, and uh, it's it's a place where, what's the primary business of that site? So it's a content subscription platform where you can subscribe to a creator to get access to all of their photos, kind of like a paywalled Instagram. Um, and 95% of the creators on it use, uh, post adult content. Okay. And how is it that you're able to do or circumvent the financial restrictions that otherwise happen on, a, uh, on, on other platforms or the, uh, the exorbitant taxes that OnlyFans is placing on its creators? So we use crypto-based payments. Um, customers on Mintstars can pay with a debit card to top up their wallet with USDC which is a stable coin worth $1. And what this means is that because we use crypto, um, first of all, we're not subject to the restrictions of credit card companies um, who make very strange rules about what kind of content is allowed and isn't. Um, and we also aren't subject to high risk payment processor fees. So traditional payment processors discriminate against sex positive businesses by charging them exorbitant fees. Um, and we're not subject to that because um, we're able to use USDC payments. And we give each user on the platform a self-custodied wallet. So the fans' payments go directly to the creator. And so the funds are completely within their control. They can cash them out anytime we like. We are not able to freeze their funds. What, what does that mean, sex positive? Um, it means that we value bodily autonomy. We believe that sexuality is a healthy thing. And we, are, we welcome any kind of creator who wants to make a living from their body, be that sex work, be that professional modeling, fitness instructors, dancers. We don't discriminate against people for doing what they want to do with their bodies. So OnlyFans itself was kind of disruptive in what it provided to creators. And now you're coming along, coming along and disrupting them. Yeah, I mean, I think they have done um, a tremendous thing in the industry, which is create independence for creators to be able to make money directly from their fans rather than having to work with a studio or other middlemen. But unfortunately, most of their creators are very frustrated and angry with the platform, um, especially stemming from in October of 2021, they announced they were going to ban sex workers from the platform because their banks and payment processors were forcing them to. And although they ultimately reversed course, they really lost the trust of their community when they did that um, because they built their business off of this community and really haven't done enough to advocate for them. Explain how it is that credit card companies can be an obstacle to this whole ecosystem. Right, so in our whole financial system, to be able to make payments, we're really dependent on two companies, Visa and MasterCard. And you know, then there's a few other credit card companies, which means that they get to set the rules for what kind of payments can be made. 
And these companies have been under immense pressure in recent years from uh, the anti-porn lobby, um, which is a group of people who are ostensibly are trying to combat sex trafficking, uh, which is something that I very much want to combat as well. Um, but it's really a, a front for a more uh, moralistic kind of campaign uh, by religious fundamentalist groups who are trying to get these companies to prevent legitimate adult businesses from operating at all by cutting off their access to payment services. And so many legitimate companies have lost their ability to accept credit card payments due to some of these new rules. Um, the Is OnlyFans one of those? I mean, do they take credit card payments or are we talking about other platforms? They do take credit card payments, but there's very strict rules um, that they have to comply with in order to do so. And there's also censorship of certain types of content. So um, this is going to sound a little bit absurd, but they don't allow things like hypnosis content or they don't allow um, like tentacle content uh, because it's considered like non-consensual. Um, so very like strange things that are, you know, old white dudes in some compliance office making these decisions without actually understanding how this con what this content looks like in reality. Yeah, so... Is it the credit card company that's putting, they're saying no hypnosis content, and then the platform responds to that by saying, okay, we can't take a credit card for this is hypnosis. They look at it, they say, this is hypnosis content, we can't take a credit card for that. Then what happens? What does the hypnosis content creator do? Are they out of luck? Can they not get payments at all, or is there another way around? So they're forced to remove that content. There, there's also a very long list of words they're not allowed to use. Um, and the creators constantly have to be trying to keep up with all these changes because it changes and then um, it's not always transparent what they're allowed to do and what they're not allowed to do. So by removing certain constituents from the, the equation, banks, credit card companies, the government, and moving to crypto as more of the payment platform, you're just giving the ultimate freedom to all these content creators the, that they actually originally wanted in the first place. Freedom, yes. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't have content guidelines, right? We still want to prevent harmful content. We want to prevent illegal content and make sure everyone on the platform is safe. But it means that we as a community get to write those content guidelines according to what we think is safe and acceptable on a platform and not according to what some guy in a compliance office says. So when you say we as a community, I know that with a lot of uh, decentralized autonomous organizations, they turn the governance of the whole DAO over to the members of the community. Are you doing that sort of thing or are you more centrally setting those policies? We are a more centralized startup, um, at least to begin with. And part of that is we've seen some other startups try to do similar things, but that were much more crypto native. And that can be very intimidating to people who've never used crypto before um, because they hear something like DAO or decentralized or, um, you know, set up your MetaMask and they don't know what that means. And so they're like, well, I, I don't understand this. I'm not going to take part. So our goal is to really create a very accessible platform that requires no crypto knowledge to use, but enables people to uh, take advantage of the benefits of blockchain technology. But we are very close to our community in that we're, we're talking to our creators all the time. We have creators on our team, on our cap table, um, and we do want to introduce shared ownership in the future. And so they take payment in USDC? Yes, but then they can cash it out to their bank account using an off-ramp provider. Right, so they have to go to another exchange or something with that and turn it into fiat. Yeah, so we offer on the MintStars platform um, off-ramp options, or if they have another crypto wallet, they can send to their crypto wallet if they prefer to do it that way. Now, a lot of people who see this are going to be interested in your personal journey. They're going to hear that you're a Harvard PhD student, but somehow you're engaged in an industry that would be considered atypical of somebody who's going to Harvard. How did you find your way into this? Yeah, well, uh, the first thing I would say to that is that there's a lot of grad students who are sex workers uh, who do it to pay their way through school because um, universities don't pay their students, their student workers enough. Um, so you would be surprised. Um, but the second thing I'd say is um, I began my research career at Duke University doing research on human trafficking. And I began uh, researching sex work because I came to see it as a labor rights issue. And I saw what many sex worker activists had done to advocate for themselves in improving their working conditions. 
um, and also discussing ways in which the anti-trafficking movement had sometimes not listened to them and had done things that ended up harming them, even if they were done with the best intentions. So I um, did research in Latin America on sex work for my undergrad honors thesis, and now my PhD project is, is continuing that work. And so you're doing your PhD work at the same time that you are the chief operating officer and co-founder of MintStars. Yes, I like to keep myself busy. You sure are keeping yourself busy. Well, thank you very much for joining us on the Blockchain Journal podcast. Thank you so much. And anyone who's interested, you can check us out at mintstars.com. Perfect. Thank you.